Hello friends, it's Susanna, and today I want to show you how to find the antiderivative of a polynomial function. We go through these four examples together that get more and more complicated, but before we get here, let's start with our first example. This is one of the first examples you will find when you start with this topic of antiderivatives. It's a polynomial function. Our function is called f and the antiderivative then is always called capital F of x. So if your function, for example, was called g of x, then the antiderivative is always capital G of x and so on. And the rule for the antiderivative is the following. You go to your x part first. We have x to the power of 3 here. You always increase your exponent by 1. So instead of x to the power of 3, we write x to the power of 4. And you leave a little bit of space because in front of this, we will write down a fraction. In the denominator, we will always write down our new exponent. So the 4 goes here. And on top of this fraction, we write down the number that was in front of our x part before. So the 8 goes on top here. This is an antiderivative, but we're not finished yet completely to get all the points. You have to do something that is confusing for some people at the beginning, but if you... If you find it confusing, just write it down. So always just add a constant c here if you are searching for the antiderivatives. Don't forget to add a constant at the end. Uh, also say that this constant, so c is element of the real numbers, so that you just say c can be any number. Why is that that we have to add this c here? The antiderivative is the opposite of the differentiation. So to check whether your result here is correct, you could just differentiate this here and see if you get this result. What happens if you differentiate a constant? So if you have a 5 here, for example, what happens if you differentiate it? We all know, hopefully, <laughs> that this 5 will vanish if you differentiate it. So that's why you can have any number here. It will always vanish if you differentiate it. But for the antiderivative, it has to be there. We don't know which number it is. That's why we just say there could be another number. So we just have to write it down. And here, this, we can also simplify it. So 8 over 4 just equals 2. So instead of the fraction, we can write it like this. This is the simpler form of this um, function. But this is the antiderivative of this function here. Let's go to our second example. Same rule. This time, a little bit more complicated, but we apply the same rule. Our antiderivative is going to be capital F of x. We take a look at our first part here because we have this plus and this plus, so we have three parts here. We take a look at the exponent. Um, instead of x to the power of 2, we write x to the power of 3 because we increase our exponent by 1. Then we have this fraction in front of this part. The 3, our new exponent, will go here on the bottom of this fraction. And on top of the fraction, we take the number that was in front of my x here before. It is a 3 as well. So we write down the 3 here. Then we go to the next part. Same rule. We take a look at our exponent of our x. We don't see any number, but that doesn't mean that there is no number. It just means that there is a 1. So instead of x to the power of 1, we write x to the power of 2. Write down a fraction in front. We take our new exponent and write it as a denominator here. And the numerator is the number that was in front of my x part. So the 4 goes here. Then we have our plus. Same rule, although there is no x in here, then it is easier. 
what to do then. You just take this number. If there is no x in here, you just take the 2 and write down an x at the end. Because if you think about to make the opposite, so if you differentiate this again, then the rule is that the x will vanish and only this number will stay there. So always think of differentiating to check if you've done the right thing, but don't forget to add the constant at the end. Mistake number one <laughs> to forget this step here. And you can also write on the side that your c is a real number. But then you can simplify this a little more. 3 over 3 is just 1. So we have just 1x to the power 3. Here we have 4 over 2 equals 2. And this is it. This is my antiderivative. Number 3. This might look terrifying at the beginning for you, but if you take a closer look at it, this is just a polynomial function as in the other examples as well. So we have x to the power of a number plus 2 times x to the power of something. So we apply the same rule. We want to find the antiderivative, so capital F of x. So we start with the first part here. We take a look at our exponent and increase it by 1. So we have x to the power of 100 this time. The fraction consists of this 100 here in the denominator. And on top, we write the number that is in front of our x here. Every time you cannot see any number, it is a 1 times here. So we take the 1 and write it on top of this fraction. Then we have the plus and we apply the same rule. We increase our exponent by 1. So we have x to the power of 1,000. We write down the 1,000 in our denominator here. And on top, we take the number here in front. So we write down the 2. Then before simplifying it, don't forget to add the c. I usually forget it, but you are better than I am. So just write it down first and then take a look at your fractions. If we can reduce something here, for example, both numbers are divisible by 2. So 2 over 2 equals 1. 1,000 over 2 equals 500. So instead of these numbers, we can make them a little smaller and write it down like this. And this is our antiderivative. And we can take a look at our last example. Here we have fractions, and it looks like this is not a polynomial function, but it actually is. So fractions themselves are not an issue with polynomial functions. It would just be an issue if you have x in the denominator. But this is not the case here. Our x is here on top of the fractions. So before we search for the antiderivative, I would recommend to write this here in a different way. I don't want to have my x in my fraction. I don't want to have it in here and I don't want to have my fraction and my x in the fraction here. So here in front of my x I have a 1 times right, if we don't have a number. So I can write the fraction as 1 over 3, and then I multiply it by my x squared. So I separate the fraction from my x part. Then I have the minus, and here the same. In front of my x, I have a 1 times. So I write the fraction first, the 1 over 4, and then I multiply it by the x. Like this, I have a number in front of my x part and here the same. So I separated the fractions from my x's. And now I find the antiderivative with the same rule. I take a look at my exponent first. I increase it by 1. So I have x to the power of 3. I write my fraction, take my 3 in the denominator, and on top I take the number that was in front of my x part. This time it is a fraction, but that's fine. I just take the whole fraction and write it 
on top of my fraction. I have to simplify this later on, but this is the rule. I just take um, the number here and write it on top of this fraction. Then I have my minus and I apply the same rule. I take a look at my exponent. It is a 1, so I have x to the power of 2 if I increase it. My fraction consists of this 2 and I take the number in front of my x part here, which is a fraction, which is fine. I write down the fraction in the numerator of my bigger fraction. Don't forget the plus c before we start with simplifying this. My c is element of the real numbers. Okay, but to get all the points, we need to simplify the fractions now. We have 1 over 3 divided by 3. We can divide a fraction by a number by writing the number as a fraction itself, so over 1. And instead of dividing by a fraction, we multiply by its reciprocal. So we make a multiplication here and switch these two numbers so that we multiply 1 by 1 now, which gives us 1, and 3 times 3 equals 9. So instead of this fraction, we have a 1 over 9 in front of my x to the power of 3. Then I have my minus and the same thing here. We want to divide 1 over 4 by 2. So we write the 2 as a fraction and instead of dividing we multiply and switch these two here so that in the end we have 1 times 1 which equals 1 and 4 times 2 equals 8. So we have 1 over 8 in front of my x squared and then the plus c and this is it. I hope it helped you. If you have any questions please let me know in the comments. I wish you a wonderful day and I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Take care!